The anime is so butt ugly that for 10 years, no one could tell if it was real. A show so poorly made on every level that it launched an ironic fandom rivaled only by that of Sonichu, the most controversial, most irony poisoned, most infamous fanime on the internet. The early 2010s was a new dawn for shitposting innovations, and the idea of an 11 episode anime filled with ear rape, animation errors, and broken Japanese on purpose was a novel concept. But was it actually on purpose? Why has the artist never broken character? And more importantly, what did they mean by this? Neon Neko Sugar Girls, the joke anime where you were the punchline. Today's art history lesson, Windows Movie Maker and its disastrous effect on the human race. If you haven't seen it, NNSG is a dramatic slice of life anime about two cat girls who save a hot guy from a gay criminal and talk to God. It has all the ingredients of a typical 2000s otaku core anime. A childlike main character with two enormous, bouncy, jiggling, eyes, a love triangle between herself and a yaoi couple, and a hyper-stylized look that borders on modern art. For 11 unforgettable episodes, you follow Rakuchan as she bounces from tragedy to tragedy, eventually dying in one of the funniest sequences ever made. And it all started, as many memes have, in 2010. On April 10th of that year, YouTuber Soap Opera 46 uploaded the first episode. And though they had a few older animations on their channel, this was their first major success. And to sum it up very briefly, Raku-chan and her flat-chested friend Koneko-chan bump into mysterious bad boy Hitoshi-san. Hitoshi-san gets kidnapped by a villain who essays him, and they fall in love. Raku-chan gets bitten by a squirrel and develops cat girl rabies. And before we get any further, I just want to be clear that I'm not calling them Chan and San because I think I speak Japanese. That's literally how they refer to themselves, and it's one of the funnier aspects of the entire show. They go to the vet, who diagnoses her with being possessed. Raku-chan, overcome by her secret feelings for Hitoshi-san and by her rabies, jumps out of a window and talks to God, and he tells her to suck it up. Then the vet performs a seance. There's a beach episode. Raku-chan finally confesses her feelings for Hitoshi-san. He rebuffs her, to which she immediately dies. And for the next two years, Soap Opera 46 would regularly upload new installments, building up a bewildered fan base and getting some very impressive view counts. But one thing stayed the same. Up until almost the very end, the animation never improved. In many ways, it got worse. Though the comments made at the time of upload are difficult to find, the comments that you can see today relentlessly point to the same thing, whether this was genuine or ironic, and we'll get to that in a moment. It was incredibly ahead of its time, because everything about it just seemed too bad to be real. Every design was so off-model that no one even knew what the characters were supposed to look like. Every line from Raku-chan was nearly incomprehensible because of her borderline racist accent and never-ending squealing cadence. It was giving hentai, and the audio quality varied so badly that it could only be done justice through the following scene. What seems to be the problem? Raku chan's been feeling really weird lately. I'm sorry to tell you this, Raku chan, but he's been diagnosed with rabies. No way, I don't think so. And there were tons of smaller problems as well. Traced artwork, hands that would make AI blush, the fact that this was the ending screen after Raku-chan died of a broken heart. And that brings us to the only thing I'm qualified to discuss here. The animation. So it goes without saying that NNSG is terribly animated, but does that automatically make it a shitpost? The answer is complicated. One thing you ought to keep in mind about animation is that a lot of the time, anime suffers a lower frame rate to preserve the quality of the artwork itself. But NNSG was unconstrained by the rules of art. Here are shots of feet. Here is a very normal shot of Raku-chan walking on some grass. Here is a shot of Hitoshi-san pleading for his life moments before he is Pulp Fictioned. But the thing about it is that you also got shots like this. Running, sophisticated jiggle physics, and the nurse character's magical girl transformation scene. As janky as it may look, it still takes an enormous amount of effort to make art this bad, and animating 11 full-sequence episodes with suspiciously balanced background music is quite the undertaking. So clearly, the artists knew what they were doing, but that begs the question. If you know how to animate, and you know how to get millions of eyes on your project, why do it in MS Paint and Windows Movie Maker? And the answer that may come to mind is for the lulls. But you have to remember that this was a different time. Irony poisoning hadn't quite set in yet, and there's a lot more going on here than you think. So let's take a step back and remember what the meme landscape looked like in early 2010. On the one hand, YouTube poops were thriving. Everybody and their mother wanted to make the next Pingus. 
Am I calling this a YouTube poop? Absolutely not. But Windows Movie Maker was incredibly popular and YouTube was increasingly becoming a dumping ground for any audiovisual nightmare you could possibly come up with. Memes were weird, they were sincere, and most of us didn't even know if it was pronounced meme or meme. -y. On the other hand, super ironic memes were simply not the default yet. Remember how common it was to see people misusing image macros as just a way to talk about their day. The concept that every meme had to be counterintuitive to point to the thing that you actually meant wasn't very widespread. Regular users of the internet, which is to say people who had not been corrupted by image boards and 4chan, were keen to use these things as a vehicle of self-expression. No irony needed. You could safely assume that fan art and fanimations really meant it. And who could forget DeviantArt. Anime, though niche, was exploding in popularity. Thousands of young artists, myself included, aspired to one day make their own anime. And when you combine these three elements, the beginning of ironic memory, anime culture, and the earnestness with which people were posting their creations online, an explanation starts to emerge. But back to the timeline. 2012. On December 24th, with no warning at all, the show came to an abrupt end. The Yaoi couple had sealed the relationship. Koneko-chan experienced no character development whatsoever, and Raku-chan, seeing her chances with Hitoshi-san slip away due to the invention of gay rights, dies of a broken heart. And that's basically everything we know about the show. So why did this fanime, out of all of the YouTube poops and baby shit posts from this time, confuse people so much? <laughs> Weeaboos. And not in the way that you're thinking. A weeaboo or a weeb is someone who has a consuming interest in all things Japan and anime, and they frequently fail to separate the two. 2000s and early 2010s weeaboos were very much the Rick and Morty fans of their day, meaning anything they touched became radioactive to everyone else. And it seems to me that this fanime, for all of its problems, was a deeply misunderstood commentary on weeaboos. While their love for anime was mostly well-intentioned, there was definitely a lot of weird exoticism going on. I don't know about you, but growing up in the 2000s, I definitely had that friend who loved anime, insisted that they were secretly half Japanese, and would make me check their eyes to see if they were getting more slanted. It was a really different time. And while it's pointless to apply the moral standards of today to a bygone era, we can all probably acknowledge that one of the major problems with weeaboo culture back in the day is that they failed to see Japanese people as human beings, and more of just a fun extension of their anime fantasy. And Neon Neko Sugar Girls does a spectacular job of portraying that version of reality. The characters are a mutated blob of anime tropes. They regularly mix Japanese words in their sentences, gifting us with such abominations as I am very arigato full and let's have a kawaii sleepover chan. They speak in a garbled accent that while it doesn't sound anything like Japanese, is very reminiscent of the early 2000s casually racist humor that bled into literally everything. I want to be ninja. Between the panty shots, the extremely cliché yaoi trope of S.A. that turns into love, and the character named Burrito Senpai who wears a sombrero and says this, Oh, Raku-chan, I am Misa you from Atakori today. Hey, baby. Everything about this screams satire, and I'm sure that must be incredibly obvious to you. But as the comments point out, this was simply far ahead of its time. It was made for the audience of now. And that brings us neatly along to today, because although the show ended in 2012, people have not been able to stop talking about it, and Soap Opera 46 has actually made a few recent appearances. On the 10-year anniversary of the first episode, they uploaded this COVID PSA, and while the picture quality had significantly improved, the animation is as dog shit as it ever was. And then two years later, they uploaded a fully animated cover of Dream Song Mask as sung by the Yaoi Rapist. Just keep and this genuinely great piece of breaking bad fan art. But their identity remains a secret. And most amazingly of all, they haven't broken character in the entire time. They even type in the early 2000s weeaboo style, complete with cow emoji and little sparkly things. The only truly dedicated full-time shit posters that we have these days are divisive people like Sam Hyde, Dan Henschel, and Norm MacDonald from Beyond the Grave. But it's just not quite the same. Whoever the artist truly is, they're a long-running shitpost that invariably makes everyone who looks at it the punchline of the joke has left a huge legacy. And the fact that they haven't broken character once makes it even funnier. And for that, we must be arigato full. This has been an art history lesson.